We had a great time in Southern France. I really believe that Nice is the best base to see Southern France. There's about 350,000 people in Nice, but it's a great center place for you to go out and see these places that we're gonna be covering. All of the places that I mentioned, they're gonna be in the body of the text. So if you just look in the body of the video, I've got a name of all the places that we're visiting there as well as the timestamps. That way you can go see those places too. Everywhere you go in Nice is beautiful. I wouldn't say that there's one place that you have to see over the other. We walked all over that city, so I think that you really are seeing the prettiest parts. That building with the pink dome, it used to be a hotel, but now it's a hospital. Things changed during World War I. And Nice has been around for a while. There's not really a certain year where it was established as a city but there's evidence that people have been living there since the BC times. That fountain, I believe, it wasn't placed there until around the year 1950. I wish I could say it's been there, you know, for centuries, but that's just not the case. The god in the center of the fountain is Helios, or is also known as Titan, the god of the sun, uh, according to Greek mythology. This square was one of the more popular squares. You could get really good gelato there at the shop, and that cathedral had been there since the 1600s. A lot of local folks, as well as tourists, will gather there. Just a really good place to hang out and cool off. Now, these glowing statues, I don't know the backstory behind that. I just know that one day they were not there and then the next night they were. And I get the impression that art kind of comes and goes there. Uh, they bring in art like an exhibit and it's seasonal, but the backstory behind the art or the artist, I don't know what it is. This was a neat little outdoor market and it was much bigger than that. It was just a section of it. But then across from that, you could just have an easy walk to the boardwalk and an easy walk to the beach. And if you look closely there at the end, you can see a bunch of people out there playing beach volleyball. And they were doing that every night. It was very common to see musicians, uh, one or two musicians playing for some of the patrons while they ate. And here at this pizzeria, I got the cook's permission to put him on camera as he was getting the pieces out of the wood fire ovens. When I was a young man, I would kind of make fun of Americans coming over and wearing their baseball caps and their favorite, you know, NFL or college football teams. But as I've gotten older, that's one of my favorite hats and I just wear what I want. It's amazing what happens when you get older. Bonu or Bono, I don't really know how to pronounce that, but the town had been around since around the year 600. It was in the region of Provence. And once we got out of Nice and out into the countryside, to me, that's what I enjoy doing. But on our way to Provence, we accidentally found this town and it was one of our favorite places. I think only about 1,200 people live there, but there are a couple of cafes that overlook this valley of pastures and vineyards. It, it was really something to see. As you can understand, the camera takes away a lot. This is Chateau La Conorgue, if I'm pronouncing that right. As an American, I'm sure I'm, I'm butchering these names. One of my favorite stories, I read the book and I watched the movie, is called A Good Year. It's made in the year 2006, starring Russell Crowe and directed by Ridley Scott. It's a British film. It's about a uh, stock market guy in London and Harrison Vineyard in France that he grew up on. He used to spend his childhood summers there with his uncle. And as he goes there, he just wants to sell it and go back to London. But as any great story goes, he ends up there and he starts going through some changes and starts reevaluating his life. And I'm pretty sure you can understand how the story ends, but it's a fantastic movie, one of my all-time favorites. 
And when you get a chance, check it out. But this is the vineyard where that movie was shot. But that coin Purdue, the CP, that's actually the wine. The wine, that wine is a character in the film. And that's kind of their go-to wine. And of course, I want to get my photo made with the coin Purdue. Now, one of the things I find interesting that I learned as I travel is when you're in Tuscany, you're going to drink Sangiovese wine or you're going to drink Chianti, mostly, because that's what's grown there. You go out to California, you're going to have Pinot Noir and Cabernet, but in Provence, you're going to be drinking Syrah. And, you, and I've been told that you would also drink Merlot, but I never really saw any Merlot everywhere we went. Yeah, I just saw the Syrah. Uh, Syrah has a little bit of a bitter taste. These wine connoisseurs call it tannins. Uh, I'm not a fan of Syrah. I'm not a fan of Malbec. They have tannins. They're a little bit of a bitter wine. I like my wines to have a little bit more rich, full body. Might have some fruit, might have some coffee, might have some chocolate taste in it. And you're gonna find that in the Cabernets. And the more fruit uh, filled taste is gonna be in your Pinot Noirs. This was a lavender field we stumbled upon. We didn't really plan to go to it. Uh, it was just alongside the road as we were driving to the vineyards. They were covered with different kinds of bumblebees and honeybees and things like that. And you can't hear it on camera, but it was just this constant buzzing echoing across the field. And this is one of those situations where being there, of course, and, and the scent of the lavender and the sound of the bees, it's not something that the camera picks up. Gourds look like ancient Greeks just came in and converted a mountain into a city. It was really something to see. It was so beautiful. And this lavender field in this abbey, it was a home for monks a long time ago. It's now a tourist attraction, it's now more of a museum. There's even a shop where you can buy some stuff. But this is another example of, we didn't plan on that. We just saw it and we decided to drive over to it and check it out. Come to find out, it's a, a heavy hitter for photographers. And if you Google this place, you'll see a lot of photos that are posted from Instagram. This is Gourds and that's the center of Gourds. And the reason why I put it in there is there's actually a scene from A Good Year here where when he's going to Provence and trying to meet with the lawyers. Uh, he, he uses this as a roundabout and kind of gets turned around a little bit. It's kind of funny. But the love interest in the movie, I believe her name is Marion Cotillard, but this beautiful actress, she's the love interest and her cafe is here. And this is where Russell Crowe's character falls in love with her. And since we were in Gourds and we knew that that cafe was there, we had to stop there too. That's the cafe, La Renaissance. And when you get some time, make sure you see the movie. This was a town that we kept hearing about, Isle sur la Sorgue. Just a really charming town for you to sit down and have a drink. I wanted to get a video of these kids because I knew what they were doing. Uh, it's a city sport called parkour. You have to be athletic to do it, but it's basically gymnastics using elements that are already in street life. If you get a chance, watch uh, some YouTube videos of these professional people that play parkour. I've put that information in the body of the video also, but those that are great at it, they're really fun to watch. Chateau Valjonas, if that's how you pronounce it, that ended up being my favorite vineyard. We basically Googled, you know, the top five, six, seven vineyards wineries. We found this to be the prettiest. We weren't able to tour the gardens because they were having a wedding there, but we were able to see a little bit of it and taste the wines. And I actually left with a bottle of their rosé. People used to make fun of it probably because of its color and it was something that women really liked to drink. So it kind of, you know, guys kind of smirk at it, but over time it's become a popular wine and it's really tasty. I don't know if you knew this, but with red wine, the reason why it's such a rich red is because they leave the skins in it. Well, Rosé is a red wine and what they do is they just leave the skin of the grapes in there for a short time period, take it out, and that's why it's pink instead of a dark red. And that's really the only difference. You men out there, don't, don't bash your Rosé just because women like to drink it. It's actually pretty good. And now we get into the city, Axe Provence. Accent Provence is not a big city. I think there's only about 140,000 people living there. These trees that they've um, got growing along the streets, where I come from, we call them silver leaf maples. 
and it is some sort of maple tree, but I'm not exactly sure what kind of breed it is in France. If you go into the Old South, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, a lot of times people will do that with pecan trees. Pecan trees are so beautiful and they get gigantic. But the problem is you got pecans falling on people's cars and that's not a good thing to have. You know, Megan and I are just walking along in the city at night and there's this team of people out there and there's this huge group of people just out there dancing. They've got a bunch of music blasting over the loudspeakers. And come to find out, there's a famous dance school in Provence. I'm pretty sure that school was putting that on to maybe bring some publicity to themselves. And one of the things that I love about the French they take care of their stuff. We never saw trash on the street. Everything was well swept, everything was well manicured. I mean, they take pride in the way their towns look and that's something that I found charming. That outdoor market went on and on and on. I mean, it, it went way down the street and it was packed and it wasn't just tourists. Like there were a lot of locals out there too. This restaurant, Flick and Flack, uh, it was recommended, it was either recommended on a travel website or on Google, uh, but Megan and I went there and it was owned by this really sweet British couple. He was an engineer, she had studied business. They were born and raised in England. Both of them had remote jobs and decided to spend that time in France and fell in love with the country. And through whatever means that they were able to pull off, they opened up a restaurant there in Aix en Provence and they were doing really well there. The owner, Alan, sat down with uh, my wife and I. We had breakfast together and it was a really good experience. This restaurant's where my wife and I ate. Just a really good restaurant called Diamore, and the food was great. Great view of the town. At nighttime, you got pizzas ready to go. I found this to be funny if you get tired of French food and you want some Irish food, you got an Irish pub, and right next to it is the British pub. And where's the American place? Oh, it's that one. I thought that was funny enough to just put right here. Let's put all the English speaking restaurants together. Well, what are we gonna do about an American restaurant? Hmm, <gasps> Starbucks. I hate to tell the people of Aix en Provence this, but uh, I wouldn't really classify Starbucks as an American pub. Now, we were in Cannes right when they had finished the film festival and they were about to start the advertising festival with Spotify and YouTube. I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. I missed him by a couple of days, but Megan and I were just passing through. We spent a day there and then after that, we were actually transitioning back to Nice. The Carlton, that's where a lot of the famous movie stars will stay during the film festival. And the film festival was just down the street. Everything was lined. The entire coast had all of these white umbrellas as well as white tents. And at the white tents is where all the festivities would take place. Then you could break away, come down, have some food and drink. And there was actually people walking along the beach offering to give you foot massages for pay.
This here is where the film awards take place. It's just um, two large buildings side by side and then surrounded by everything else that you've already seen. Just the streets, the fountains, the restaurants, the shops, your white tents, and that was pretty much Cairns. It's a small town. I think only uh, 74,000 people live there. We then go to Monaco. Uh, Monaco is only, I think, uh, one mile long and two miles wide. It's its own little country. We didn't have to show our passports to get in. Monte Carlo is just a little block of Monaco, and Monte Carlo is where the big casino is. And come to find out, uh, the country was going downhill, and they did some consulting, and they figured out that they needed to build a casino there and market themselves as a casino destination, and that's how Monaco was saved as a country. That's a pretty interesting story. I don't remember the details. We took a tour, and the tour guide was kind of filling us in on it. But when you get an opportunity, look it up. It's pretty interesting. And of course, uh, here in the Monte Carlo, here's the famous casino. One of the wealthy families that lived in Monaco, the Rothschilds, uh, this is one of their mansions, and we took a tour of that while we were there. And if you do go to Monaco, I highly recommend you do the same. I, I, for me, it was the highlight of the trip. Outside the museum was a cafe that overlooked the water.
And when you have this kind of wealth, you can have little cushion chairs made for your lap dogs. Ezzy Village uh, was highly recommended us to go see. It was just a small town up on the hill. Only 2,000 people lived there. The population in this little village dates back to around the year 300 BC. At least that's the oldest pottery that they were able to find. No one really knows how long people have been living there. You could tell some of the stones above the doorways. They had been there for a very, very long time. Villa French, Surmer, as I said before, I don't know the French pronunciation, pretty sure I'm butchering it. And it was charming, but after seeing all of the other places that we had seen, this little town just kind of reminded us of all the other towns that we had already seen. It's a small resort town near Monaco, near Italy. They know people have been living in that small town since before. They call it prehistoric times before. There's evidence that humanity that was living there could write. I think only about 5,000 people live there. It's really, its main source of income is tourism. There's a lot of shops and restaurants. And I would say that if you wanted to stay on the southern coast, but you didn't want to have to pay prices to stay in Cairns, you didn't want to have to pay the prices to stay in Monaco, uh, that little town would probably be a great place to go. Certain elements of the video, if you liked them, don't forget they are in the body of the text. Send this video to somebody that could use it. I do post travel videos every summer, so if you wanna see more travel videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any favorite parts of Southern France or you had some wonderful experiences, leave your thoughts in the comments section.